interrupt our program to bring you this important message. Hotep, I am that I am, some call me Haru, your modern monk, your cannabis fitness strategist, back at it again, here for you. I want to give a shout out to you, thank you for your subscribing, thank you for following, thank you for sharing, thank you for your comments. You know you can reach me at 206-659-6382, yes that's 206-659-6382, you would always can touch me on email as well at youarethegym at gmail.com. That's youarethegym at gmail.com. And we just moving right along with episode number 72. Yes, episode number, no, forgive me, 77. <laughs> episode number 77. And this is Level Up with a special guest for y'all today, my brother Finn. What's good with you, brother? Hey, everybody. I appreciate you. So, what brings you to this show today? What 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 is what is the what is the uh, path that brings us together today? <laughs> yeah, man. Well, um, I'm, search, I'm searching for some advice and uh, maybe some motivation as well. Mm. Uh, mm. A lot of stuff has gone down, uh, even in just the last few days since after I reached out to you, um, the original reason that I reached out to you was that, uh, I don't know if y'all have listened to the previous podcast, uh, labeled Finn, but that was talking about how I kind of left the YMCA due to COVID reason. And I was on the path to becoming the health and wellness director of that gym. Yes. Well, that gym actually reached out back to me. Oh. But in the meantime, I have been building on my own business Interesting. and trying to start, uh, you know, bringing my own message, which is, you know, self-sustainability, uh, kind of what Haru's message is, which is, you know, you are the gym. Learn how to how to work on yourself without the need of, you know, uh, equipment and build up those basic the basic calisthenic skills build up your uh, your mental strength, yes. stuff like that, how to program and all sorts of stuff like that. So that's what I've been working on. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that, that was one of actually the career paths that I wanted to talk to you about. And then another one is I've been just trying to make that green uh, because the, you know, the, the personal training fitness business that I'm building, it's a slow build. Yes. So I've been doing carpentry as well, and that's okay. Some, some there as well. So those are the kind of the three paths, and I feel them kind of tugging on each other, telling me I need to go one way or another. Um, I don't feel like I'm at the crux yet. Gotcha. But I feel like it's coming up soon. You know, and and, and I know to all of this. Yeah, and I know you. I know. Down. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, just to add on to all of this, uh, I just found out yesterday that my wife is pregnant with a sex, so that I'll be uh, a second kid. So, you know, times are uh, crazy right now. <laughs> times are changing, as Dylan, uh, yeah, Dylan would say. <laughs> Bob <laughs> Dylan, times are changing. It's interesting, yep. yeah. So, so basically, I think with the child is is definitely something that's gonna allow you to step your game up. So taking more ownership, you know what I'm saying? Taking more ownership of where you you know that where that energy it truly lies. So here's 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 what I think, and this is just my opinion. Don't take me wrong. We all have these particular um, experiences, especially because we. We have opened up the doors, right? You have opened up those doors, the director, the the carpentry opportunity, uh, even adding another value of a child, bringing more value into the world. You kind of see what I'm saying? So you open those opportunities up. You presented those opportunities. Now, you are attracting those opportunities as well. This is what I would do. Even though they say focus on one thing, you feel what I'm saying? But I think with 
with all that being said, what you had just broke down with the, you know, director, with um, your own business, uh, doing some carpentry. See, that all sounds like self-sustainability to me. You you kind of see what I'm saying? Utilizing it. So, so basically, utilize, you can utilize all those facets. I think you can take advantage of the opportunity. It's just about balancing it, right? That would be the the, the problem. I, I would do this. This is what I would do. I would utilize the carpentry and I would utilize my own personal business. I wouldn't go back to the director position because what that's going to do is going to take you away from your family. With the business, the self-driven business, you're able to stick with the family. You feel what I'm saying? Carpentry is another asset for you. This is what I'm saying. It's an asset for you because you're creating value. You can you get what I'm saying? You're creating value. Don't take me wrong. All the director's position is is just gonna put you in a situation where you gotta well, don't take me wrong, you're managing people's attitude right now. But just think about it. It's going to be a, and these are the people you want in your circle. These are not people who's just coming into your circle and then you're dealing with them wherever they are. You kind of see where I'm coming from? If that makes sense. Right. You kind of see, because yeah, okay. the, the problem even with these jobs, and don't take me wrong, I work a full-time job as well as working my business. The thing with it is this, don't allow these jobs to dictate your whole especially now since you're actually about to add another child in the mix. A family is probably one of the most challenging lessons out of all the lessons. Or wait, let me back up. That's probably the second lesson, right? Because the first, the first is you. You feel what I'm saying? The first, you have to, you have to start mastering yourself or mastering the skills that can dictate your habits of good habits, if that makes sense. <laughs> So are you with me now? I'm I'm yeah, kind I'm, with you, man. I'm kind of going around the situation, but I think what would benefit you would be. This is just my opinion too, brother. My advice, and you know, you do your own homework, you do your own due diligence, but I think you'll be better off focusing on your business, that self-sustain, that you are the gym mentality. You feel where I'm coming from, because. What you're going to yeah. do, you're going to take yourself out of character, per se. You're not going to be able to spend the time that you want to spend with your family. Especially now, since you're about to add another. And, and don't take me wrong. See, the COVID changed a lot of, of these dynamics, too. Because everything's starting to open up or everything is starting to close up again. Um, but right. it's about how you position yourself. I'm not sitting here saying I got all the answers either, brother. I'm, I'm, I, and I think you're young enough to take advantage of the opportunity now. See, I'm in my 40s. Don't, I'm not saying it's over and I can't do nothing and I'm this and that. But it's certain things that I would not be able to achieve because I'm a lot older now, if that makes sense. Especially like starting a family and doing all this. Don't take me wrong. That's all good. It's all gravy. I don't think I'm in that mindset yet or will be in this particular um, phase in my particular lifestyle, but what I would do, I would okay. definitely start mastering the skills because the key skill is sales, right? Hands down, sales. You, you. Yeah, marketing is definitely my uh, my struggle right now. Trying and, to learn that. And brother, it's not even the marketing; it's the sales. You could just gotta sell you. You feel what I'm saying? Th these are the things that I don't think. We, we get it later. <laughs> These are the things we get later. But you sold yourself to that wife. You sold yourself, you know, to actually produce <laughs> more children. So you're doing the right thing. It's just about duplicating that salesmanship within you to master it. So the key thing would be with the, the carpentry, you, you, you're, you're selling... You see what I'm saying? There's an opportunity to make some side money, but there's some opportunity to get self-sustained. You're learning how to build your home. <laughs> right. You feel me? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. So so these are the things I don't think we really put together because I'm I and not bragging or anything, but I look at the future, the future connection, the director position. Yeah, it's going to be good for temporary. Maybe the money be temporary good, but it's not going to benefit you in the long run, the long game, the long duration. You kind of see what I'm saying? Because you'll tend to be there and you'll be there for years. <laughs> Look up and wonder. You kind of see what I'm saying? But with your own business model or your own branding, you're able to dictate. You're able to start delegating as you as you build your funds up. Start adding other coaches to your philosophy. That's what I'm doing right now. And I'm adding other coaches to the philosophy of you are the GM. I'm not saying I'm this super, I got this super model going on, but th it makes sense. Those people who want to be a part of something greater than you are the GM, because it is always something greater than Finn, greater than whatever this energy it may be that we call the oneness or God or, you know, Yahweh or Allah or Jehovah or whoever you want to go with. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's way bigger than us, even though you got to provide. You got to provide food for yourself. You got to provide food for your family and now your upcoming child. So, and then, and I don't know what your situation is with your wife, if she's working or whatever the case may be, where you can start balancing, utilizing opportunity with your finances, getting certain things in place when you're talking like insurance, when you're talking like um, self-sustainability, you know, even if it's acquiring some land or utilizing on that. And I'm not sitting here saying I'm a financial advisor, so don't go with that. But it's all about a certain balance or a counterbalance. Right. Yeah, definitely. So uh, for you, uh, question. Yes. You work full time and you balance managing your own business. What is that like? What? How did you find that balance? So, or I'm sure it's probably a process. How are you finding it? It's a, it's a can't. Well, it's a, and I think every business owner can tell you this. It's, it's always a, <laughs> a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Just like life, it's always a challenge. It's always something. It's always something that's gonna push you. Kind of right. like you're working out when you're training. If you, if you're hitting a plateau, you know you have to change your game up. You see what I'm saying? Your game, your approach. And the key thing, what I've been learning over the time is being able to being able to understand what I'm actually doing, right? Actually, these processes yeah. of what a business, what it, what it what is a business when you start making profit, when you start branding, when you start selling yourself, when you start making this marketing content. You don't necessarily have to do all that. You can hire. You can delegate. That's the key. I think that's really the the overall key because most people are getting paid. If you really want to keep it 100, most people are getting paid for products they have developed already. You see what I'm saying? Kind of like if we want to throw in there like Jeff Cavalier. It's probably people... People are probably taking some of his advice, and then some people are just getting his his programs. That's all they've been doing, just selling programs and supplements. That's basically what it comes down to. Oh, pause. Sorry for the disruption there. We're going to get back to the show. Matter of fact, let me, let me interject here to our sponsor, my brother, Dr. Boz Moreno. Shout out to you for the bee venom, for the apoptosin, for the... Stem cells that you've been providing the world, giving people an opportunity to regenerate their bodies, get their bodies back, get their immunity system back up and high, functioning to a level where it makes sense. So shout out to you, Dr. Boz Moreno. I do have teas, white teas available for those of you. I got a few more left. Um, getting down to the, <laughs> getting down to the, the few numbers here. But uh, definitely you can reach me at 206-659-6382. Touch bases. I want a t-shirt. Um, 
or youarethegym at gmail.com. Shout out to you. And thank you again for tuning in and tuning up. I'm here with my brother Finn, and we're going to get back to the show, episode 77. What's good with you, Finn? Hey, man, just still here and enjoying this conversation with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what was you going into? Oh, we was talking about balancing of business and full-time jobs. Now, here's another thing. Full-time job yeah. is supplying. This is, what I, this is what I want you to think about. With your carpentry, your carpentry opportunity is supplying the needs, right? It's supplying some of the needs or some of the fuel, even if it's a certain percentage, to your business model, right? So you keep in that money that's flooding or that asset that's actually creating the asset, basically. That's what you're doing. You're creating the asset, saving up to create the asset. So that's basically... The, the carpentry is just temporary. That's how you got to keep your mind. You got to keep focused. These, this job or whatever you want to do on the side, whatever the case may be, besides your business, is you got to keep a mindset. It's just a temporary opportunity to fill your business, to fill your brand. And what I mean by business, let me substitute it by brand. Finn's brand. You are the gym is Haru. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. And, and that's where you got to kind of distinguish and really, you're talking about motivation, you're talking about self-inspiration, but you want to shine so hard on that. <laughs> you want to shine both in your business model, in your brand, and you want to shine just as hard in your job opportunity, right? So don't hesitate right. to take advantage of the opportunities at the job, even though you may be leveled up as we call it this particular episode but at the same time you're building the skills that you need like for example i work at home depot i'm in a position i'm in a lead position where i'm leading other people i'm actually you know guiding other people what's what's so cool about this it creates my communication skills to be able to talk with people see it's a difference not at people, but with people. You feel what I'm saying? Learn it. Because the, the, the jobs are for character building. That's basically what it comes down to, Finn. And, when, when, and the whole point is balancing, being able to set a time. Okay, this is family time. You're not interrupting me, my business. You're not interrupting me, my job. This is my family time. So I'm going to focus on my family time. I'm going to focus on my job time. I'm going to focus on my business or me. See, and, and the key thing is all those focuses are basically creating skills for you that you're utilize, utilizing in your business model. When you're catering to other uh, fitness enthusiasts or other cl your clients, your customers, people that you're catering to, to be able to communicate what you want them to to see or want that result for them at the ending of the result. Because you know what? It's interesting. People say fitness is one of the easiest games to get into. But it's not. Think about it. Because you're selling people and a result. you selling people a result that they have not seen yet. Yeah. You kind of see what I'm yeah. saying? So it's, it's a yeah. lot more harder. That's why it pays off to be. It pays off. To get you right, you want to you want to have the yeah. physique. They be like, man, this dude got the physique. He knows what he's talking about. He's living it. That's the key, Finn. You gotta live it, even though it's challenging. Don't take me wrong. It's challenging, especially if you only been around here a few years on this plane, and especially going into this industry, because you can take advantage of the opportunity right now. I don't think you should go. This is just my opinion as the director because you know what they play you down that's why i didn't like the box going to these box gyms i was a fitness trainer at bally's and i was a fitness trainer at um 24 hour fitness and you know what the saddest thing is people really can't shine within those particular business models and you uh ymca is going to be the same because you're dealing with a certain type of clientele 
You feel right. me? And you're dealing with a, a, right. a mindset of corporatocracy, <laughs> if that makes sense. Because it's like people don't, people are very complacent. And when they see somebody who's got some ambition, who's got drive, who wants something in life, who got dreams and outcomes that they truly want, people literally step in your way, brother. <laughs> I don't want that. And, and and this is what I think would happen. When you get over there and you're you're offering all types of ways to market and this and that, they're not even hearing you, brother. Cause they already got a system that's actually a failing system. That's why hence all these so called gyms are closed. You feel what I'm saying? Cause they have forgotten about the people, how to relate to people. And it's no excuse even with this social media or social distancing, whatever they claim. It's kind of funny because we still can do a lot of work even <laughs> even if it's a small group of people, right? What, less than five or something they saying within these particular... Uh, it, and that depends on your state regulations or whatever, or policies or whatever they claim it, you know. Exactly, Because yeah. you're out in Texas, right? Right. Where everything's big, so they they doing everything big out there, right? <laughs> Ten people. <laughs> They're trying to, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's any bigger than any other places. Got you, got you. Just yeah. a just a big ego. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And see, there's 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 another thing right there. That's where I think where the the problem will lie within that director's position, because. You're making decisions, but the problem is the upper management is actually going to dictate a lot of your movement. You kind of see what I'm saying? Far as your interaction with the people, look at the waivers. Just read the waivers. You know what I'm saying? It's like you you it's it's kind of like the whole <clears throat> social distancing and this and that. You can't touch the people. This and that and a third. Not saying that's the case even with people being so sensitive emotionally, <laughs> at least when you when you have your own business model, not saying you can talk to people any old kind of way, but at least you can get the point across. Because you you can you can you can hire the client or you don't have to hire the client. You feel me? You have that choice. That's that's the different. I think that's the the really. Uh, if you don't get anything out this show today, I think that's the, the giver right there. You have the power, brother. You have the power, especially with the skills you have and the skills you're going to gain throughout the future. Because a lot of times, them places hold you back from developing. You know what I'm saying? For, uh, for advancements. Yeah, maybe. I mean, corporate, you can get... And then you, you would notice a lot of things... If you notice, this is one thing I notice in, especially working for big box gyms, I notice a lot of these personal trainers, they get really lazy physically. Okay. Physically. Yeah, yeah, physically. The knowledge might be there. You know what I'm saying? All the constant hype, you know, they, they throw out all these scientific words and all that other stuff. And I think it intimidates a lot of clients keep it real with you. That's just my take on it. And I'm not demonizing <laughs> the situation, but at the same time, it all makes sense. Like I say, when you start putting things in perspective, if that answer, it's a long answer <laughs> to your question. Because no. <laughs> it's all about development. Well, it's, it's, a good answer. it's a good answer and it's really helpful. So I appreciate it. And the cool thing, you can go back and re-listen to it as, you know, as we complete yeah. this, you know, because it, it, right. it's really some, like I said, is we make things complicated. You know that we as species, as human beings, and we claim we are this intelligent type being, but we we have not been acting intelligent. <laughs> yeah. Literally, we're making decisions yeah. like. How do we even, how, 
how do we even come to these kind of conclusions? And I think what is where we're missing is a certain education or a certain thinking capacity or certain thinking parameters where we go back to certain principles, but we don't, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Can you expand on it, though? So, when your educational system has failed you time and time again, and and it's interesting, too, because I I even remember (laughs) kind of, you know, growing up in the 80s, and you can kind of see where the education was falling off. You know, going into the 90s, education really started falling off far as certain things they taught in the schoolhouses that you don't learn anymore, like critical thinking, right? Everything is think, everything they think for you. You're, we're doing a test, brother. We're, we're taking multi, what is it, multiple choice? It's not that, yeah. <laughs> you see where I'm coming from? These things have a lot to do. Now they're going by all this SATs and all these other uh, bias tests that really don't have nothing to do with real life. You kind of see what I'm saying? Real life, what we do in real life. You know what I'm saying? Now, most of us, most of our jobs are sitting down behind a computer, unless you're in retail, you know. Retail is probably the most, I think, retail has changed so dramatic where it's not, uh, it's really not, I don't think you really gain any value from it anymore. And let me, let me, let me qualify that. McDonald's was considered a great opportunity to work for. Because you know what? McDonald's actually give you <laughs> basic skills in life. I don't know about now, but when I used to work for McDonald's, you actually gained an understanding of how to utilize, how to communicate with the people, how to count money, you know what I'm saying? How to... Uh, how to organize, making sure everything is organized within your particular area. If you're working the, if you're working the oven or the kitchen or in the kitchen area, it's kind of interesting. And then even with the management, but I don't know how that working today. But the concept of it, a franchise, what works, right? Now, with today's mindset, now we have like coming up in the '90s. Pharmaceuticals, like the supplement company, wasn't even as big as it is now. And I mean, it's a multi-crazy billion dollar industry, right? Crazy stuff. They didn't have all this. They had creatine, but creatine was like rare. A lot of people couldn't really, well, a lot of people didn't really understand, the had the knowledge of doing it. You know, remind you, I grew up on the Ronnie Coleman's. I grew up on the, you know, the Jay Cutler's, you know. You kind of see what I'm saying? So you're like looking at these dudes. You knew steroids was the game. You knew that, but you didn't know. You didn't know. Okay, well, if that's the case, these dudes are looking nice. (laughs) You know, even though I wasn't really a big on that type of stuff. But then, okay, the supplements. Oh, they're taking whey protein and all this other stuff that has been phenomenal. But this is the key thing. What I started noticing in the late 90s. People popping pills. And what I mean by that is like all these pharmaceuticals became something where even my run with uh, Amway, when I was with Amway, they was pushing all these supplements, you know. So I'm buying all these supplements, popping all these supplements, thinking, what is this? I'm not, I don't like taking pills. (laughs) But this is what I'm I'm showing. I'm kind of building a, a, a picture or painting a picture. So basically what's going on with all these drugs hitting the market, with all the food additives and uh, ingredients that actually screwing our minds up, literally. We're cloudy. We got a lot of fluoride, all these toxins that we're dealing with now. So our thinking, our thinking process is no longer available to push or move as fast as it used to. Oh, we use 10% of our brains. No, 
We use way more than that when we allow it to. That's why I would say you must add meditation to your game. Because what meditation do, meditation allows you to think. You see what I'm saying? It allows you to start thinking on premises of your life. What is important with you? What needs to be done? Yeah, you know what, Finn? Your first priority is you. Then your mate. Then your children. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So, soon as you put those in order, I know we need to make the money. Hands down. Money is part of the fabric now. I get it. But see, you don't want money to rule you. You want to control the money. <laughs> you feel me? And by controlling the money, you control you. And I'm not sitting here saying I got big money and I'm rich and I'm, you know, I'm rich in all. I'm rich in health. You know what I'm saying? I'm rich in family. I'm rich in uh, significant others. I'm rich in having a brother talk to me on the phone right now. Somebody we just met. You kind of see what I'm saying? So I'm rich in I'm rich in those fields. But at the same time, as I keep developing that richness or that wealth, I'm I'm getting more discipline. Because that's the thing that a lot of us don't have. We don't have no disciplines. That's what I do love about calisthenics. Because it's a discipline. You are the gym is a discipline. You know, you work out because you know you need to work out to be better, to become better, to feel better. To be more active. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? You're no good if you can't. You're no good if you're no good. <laughs> but yeah. the but this is what. But this is what I think you you. What life has given you. Here's an opportunity that life has given you. And like I said, I think you, you know, and this is just my thinking, brother. You don't have to take none of this advice. But I think you'll be better off doing you. And just, and the carpentry, the carpentry is the shit. Keep it real with you. I wish I would have got more into that type of stuff. Because I'm really, I'm a DIY type guy. And, and that's why I think I'm at Home Depot. Because I'm already, I'm learning, one thing, I'm learning the material. So I'm knowing the material. But at the same time, I'm using self-sustain ability uh, concepts. Like the thermal, uh, I can't even talk no more. But the the earth ships, the cob homes, the you know, the solar panels, you um, know. You kinda see yeah. what I'm saying? And building on that with the with the tools do we have that last longer or whatever the case may be. So that's what I would say to kinda put things in perspective. Cause you know what? One of the things too to think about is like I said, and I don't know if you have a meditation practice, you know, you do. But I would suggest you would start adding a meditation practice. Even if it's just five minutes a day, brother. Starting off with five minutes a day. Uh, I'm interested in hearing what, what you do for your meditation practice. So, I have... I've been doing a lot of meditation over the years. And the first type of meditation that was actually... Uh, spoke to me was... Uh, binarial beats you see what i'm saying okay. i was always attracted to that well i'm a musician you know <clears throat> i play a little piano you know play the drums got a little skills i got i produce a couple yeah, i got a bunch of commercial works the thing is this though with the beats there are certain frequencies that can catapult your mind or put your mind in an ultimal state, alpha state, beta state, theta state, yada, yada, yada. But it basically puts your mind in a state where, okay, it's time to relax. Okay, it's time to focus. But what I notice with the beats <laughs> going on in my head, it basically helped me think more clear on what I need to be doing. That's what I love about doing these podcast shows not saying I got all the answers I wish I did <laughs> but one of the things 
is it, it put things in perspective because I go and listen to what's actually being expressed. What is actually going on within my psyche? So I would suggest introducing yourself to like white noise, introducing yourself to like certain frequencies. And I can send you um, a link. I'll send you a link to a, a particular binarial beat app that I use pretty regular when I'm when I'm not doing my silent retreats or silent meditations or just doing my deep breathing meditations because I I do a, a variety I don't know if I told you but I am a trained yogi <laughs> um, oh, wow. yeah yeah. And, yeah so I I have been trying to you know even the um, even the brothers the um, the monks the monk styles. Uh, um, now I can't even. I can't even think. It's so many other techniques out there. The transcendentalists. The trans. I can't even. See, but you know what I'm talking about. But I would start off if I if I were you. Start off with the the sounds because they do have some really good apps out there. Like Sam Harris, he has a really good application um, for meditation. Oh, like yeah, and it's a guide meditation. Then you have a uh, headspace, and all these. The funny thing is, they're 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 pretty powerful um, apps. Even though they do have a option where you can pay for the premium, even though I don't think the premiums are. <laughs> it's only a few other things that may you may can use within the particular premiums, but. Other than that, you can utilize the opportunity of the meditation techniques that they give you. Then you can duplicate that and take it on your own. Uh, deep breathing is another uh, particular technique. And we used to, they call it in um, the form of yoga, Hatha yoga, they call it, um, or Kudalini yoga, they call it uh, fire breathing. And you basically... Okay. And these techniques I use, matter of fact, I got a video up in on my YouTube channel and I and I do deep breathing prior to going into my workouts, my training. And that's what I do love about Denver or Colorado because of the elevation, right? It actually helps with with your performance. That's what I notice well too. Coming down to these other areas or low uh, elevation, you do notice a difference with your uh, endurance, you know, and that's the key thing to your breathing techniques, um, helping out with your breathing techniques and certain things on that level, especially when you're doing your meditation forms. But they, they like Sam Harris, will help you and many other great um, meditations, but them are the two that comes to mind, Headspace and Sam Harris's uh, particular technique. Thanks. Yeah, I'll check those out for sure. No doubt. Hey, I uh, we wanted to hear about since we're we we're, we're, we're kind of on the subject of working on yourself. I wanted to hear about uh, your training program because you may have talked about it on other podcasts, but I haven't really heard about it. Um, I want to hear kind of what you do on a daily basis, or maybe better, a, a weekly basis. What does it look like for you to train? and see progression in your skills. So, I'm a big advocate, first and foremost, I'm a big advocate of journaling. I think that's probably okay. one of the key uh, elements within any fitness, you know, particular uh, trainer or not even just trainer or type of um, uh, enthusiast, you know. So, yeah. <clears throat> basically what I, I, I'm a big advocate of I don't follow a whole bunch of people, but I do follow a few key people that I get certain techniques that I think techniques that will actually benefit my training or added in my training. Because I usually, my training is more high intensity training. And what I do with my, my particular training, if you'll see me in the gym, I'm every other day, I usually train every other day. Every other day, unless I'm on a regiment, I'm, if I'm on a supplement regiment or TRT or whatever I'm doing, because <clears throat> I'm not natural, I'm going to keep it real with you. 
I'm not natural. I do use supplementation, and I do, uh, but at the same time, because I have hit my peak. I hit my peak when I was in my 30s. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, now I can't build as I used to, so I'm going to work on getting strong as hell. <laughs> so that's usually, yeah, right. you see what I'm saying? Strong as hell, having super endurance, like my stamina, crazy. You know what I'm saying? And being able to uh, have the energy that I need for particular events or particular issues that I'm dealing with, especially on an everyday situation. Because that, that's one of the things, the resilience. I'm big on that. I, I definitely want to. Um, and so with these particular, I'm a big comp. So this is what this is what a particular week would look like for me. I would go to the gym. Since our gyms are open here in Hawaii, I go to 24-Hour Fitness. So I would go to the gym. Say it'd be a, like a, a Sunday. I would go on a Sunday and I would do like maybe, <clears throat> I'd do a full body workout. So I would go, I'd do squats and I'd do body squats, remind you. I'd do some body squats, then i hit a, then i hit the leg press. And I put on some heavy weight on the leg press, like 360, right? I put on a leg press and I'll hit that as I'm doing my body squat, body weight squats in between, right? So this is, this is the, this is the, they talking about high protrophy. I can't even say the term, <laughs> but well, working your ass hard. Yeah, working your ass hard. I'm usually going in the gym and I work, like the brothers say, work harder than the day you did the other day. And I'm basically, that's how I get down, literally. So I'm like, I would do that. Then I would go to a, I go to do some hamstrings and I hit some hamstrings real good, right? So I focus on the lower body Sunday. I would focus on the lower body, even though it's a full body workout day. I'll go hit my hamstrings, then I may hit some calf raises, do some bunch of calf raises. And I usually do about five sets of everything. Sound crazy, but I do about five sets of everything, you know. And I do it, and I do... Spend a good hour and a half in the gym? Yeah, particularly in the gym. But usually when I'm doing calisthenic workouts, and I'm like, um, they usually 30 to 45 minutes at the longest. Unless I just want to do some extra work. If I'm doing some specialty work, it's going to be a little longer on certain things I want to do or focus in on. Um, so I basically would go do that, do the legs, and then I'll hit the upper body. The first thing I go hit is like, I would go do some pull-ups first. I'll hit pull-ups. I do about 50 pull-ups, get a warm-up in, whatever. That's warm-up. Then I'll, And then I'll hit, the, I'll hit a bench press. And then I'll put... I put 225 on there. You know what I'm saying? I put 225 just to push my just to push myself. I'm already fatigued, right? So I would go in there, I would do that, then I would hit push-ups in between my sets, my bench press sets. That's what I'm doing. That's what my typical for that particular issue. Then after that, after the chest, I'll go hit up, well, the chest, still the chest. I'll go do some incline presses. Some dumbbell incline presses. And I would hit that. That that would range from 35 to 45 pounds, maybe 55 if I'm feeling <laughs> hella hella hyped <laughs> or influenced yeah. or whatever. So I would do that and do do hit that up. Then I would go to the then I go to the limbs. I just start hitting the limbs. I go start doing some bi, uh, biceps. And I usually start out with some hammers. Hammers, then I do regular curls, get that little burn in there. Not little burn, but it'd be burning by then. Because remind you, with all that push-ups, I mean the push-ups and the, the bench press and the uh, incline press, I'm already killing it. <laughs> so I got the blood already flowing through the full body currently right there. You know what I'm saying? So are you, then, are you doing horizontal loading or vertical loading? I'm doing... Horizontal, I would say horizontal. Okay. Yeah, horizontal. Yeah, horizontal. And then, and in some cases, like during that week, I would do something like that. Because I usually try, my, no, ain't no try. I usually in my week, I would do a heavy day, 
heavy day on one of those uh, one day of the week and then I usually go with more higher reps on certain things you see what I'm saying unless I'm at the park and I'm working out with somebody because I usually like working out with somebody you know come meet me at the park we get busy in the park or whatever you know whatever the case may be but I usually like high intensity I'm very high intense intense workouts like the last workout we did was like 200 push-ups, 200, uh, 200 pull-ups. You know what I'm saying? It took us about an hour to do it. You yeah. know, took us about an hour for that workout. But it was, and, and that's nothing. I mean, don't take me wrong. People, you know, people be, don't take me wrong. That might be crazy to a lot of people. But <laughs> to me, it's nothing. I I start really getting my pump after about 200 reps. You kind of see what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, it's definitely relevant to whatever you're doing. But usually, my training is... And Finn, don't take me wrong. I've been training for a long time. So, I know my body. I know what exercises work for me. That That's the nutshell. Because, I mean, a lot of times people are still trying to learn their body. Good. I hope so. But I know how my body works. I know I'm not a big... Um, I'm still on the intermittent fasting, so I still use that. I'm not a big eater, so I'm not eating crazy calories, what they suggest in 3,500 calories. No, that's why I can stay as lean as I am, but I have energy. I'm high energy anyway, <laughs> if that makes sense, you know, unless I'm just depleted with some, you know, with something. And, and, and remind you, I'm a vegetarian slash vegan, so I... I okay. And what I mean by that, I, I do like I do eggs, but sometimes I don't even do eggs for long periods of time, you know, within my within that year, you know, or milk or anything like yeah. that. So just kind of putting that out yeah. there. Cool. And, and uh, so for whenever you're doing calisthenic skills, for example, you do the muscle up, right? Yes. So, um, because right now I'm at a point to where I'm still, and we've talked about this before, I'm still learning skills. Yes. I don't really have any skills yet, calisthenics wise, such as the handstand, push up, planche, muscle up, front lever, etc. So I'm still in the learning process, and I'm trying to figure out what kind of programming works best for me to be able to learn a skill. Okay. Um, but still be able to do all of the other training that I want to do at yes. the same time. I'm with you. I'm with you. So here's here's what I would think about or something I can put in your head, suggest. The one thing is master the basics. Hands oh, yeah. down. You, you feel me? If you can do 100 push-ups, you feel me? If you can do yeah. <laughs> if you can do 100 dips, if you can do 100 pull-ups, you these these are these are the essentials, because basically, what a even doing a mat, uh, a muscle up is really triceps, brother. Your tricep game got to be on point. That's the transition. Your triceps, even though I don't really agree with the muscle up, because I think the muscle up causes a lot of shoulder injuries. That's just my opinion. I mean, it looks good. It looks hella cool, <laughs> but it's a yeah. I think it it no on a physical uh, you know physical fitness type of a scientific type of approach it's not good for your shoulders you know but even like the kind of building up to your um to your skills you know what I would do to build your skills really <laughs> I would I would get some training on ring training. Gymnastic yeah. rings. I would invest in some gymnastic rings and start there and all your skills and I'm not trying to be funny, but all your skills will come throughout that particular training on the rings. Guaranteed that. If you okay. make that a part yeah. of your your training regimen, the rings is superior literally. Because it helps with all these muscles that you don't even really use that you're actually using within all those particular 
uh, planches and all these other handstand push-ups. Because it's developing core strength, it's developing arms. Uh, every uh, Your whole body is activated with the rings, literally. I have a, I have a set of uh, rings that I do pull-ups on. Are there specific exercises aside okay. from pull-ups you would recommend? Yes. I, matter of fact, after this show, I, well... I'll send you some I'll send you some training too. I got some some training I've been using. I mean, don't take me wrong. I'm a little advanced on them now, but my point is <laughs> it's a lot of techniques that you can incorporate within your training that you can get better and you can be more an asset within uh within those other particular specialties, the planche, you know. Uh, the yeah. back lever and all the all these other different um, handstand push-ups and all these other specialty. But like I said, and it's kind of interesting too because I'm thinking about Hannibal, Hannibal for King, one of the calisthenic uh, greats out here. He oh. doesn't he doesn't even do the handstand push-ups, but he got a killer dip, <laughs> killer dip oh, yeah. game. You see what I'm saying? So it's 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 interesting. And then like. He's not an advocate of rings, but in their right, like Hit Richards, he talks about that too. Well, he's not a gymnast, but the gymnast, I think, has the better body, keep it real with you. That's just my opinion. I agree. You know, and that's what I noticed with the ring game, because the ring game help you build all types of muscle, all types of games. Yeah, sure. You know, so that's what I would suggest. But I, after this, I will send you, after our show, I will send you some uh, training to pick. You know, some training and some apps too. I think will help um, help you gain more confidence because that's all it is, brother. You know that, right? Um, <laughs> you're telling me it, so I better believe it. Yeah, no, no, and you don't have to believe it. But I think that's basically what it comes down: confidence. Within doing a handstand push-up, getting the form. That's and and that's another thing I like about certain certain uh, YouTubers, kind of like calisthenic movement. They're they're really good. They're really good in explaining certain um, um, details about certain movements that you want to master, that you want to accomplish. But the one thing they always go back to is the basic. Have the basic push-up. Have the basic pull-up. Have the basic dip. You kind of see what I'm saying? Have the basic ab exercise. Don't be sitting up here doing all these tricks of the trade, but you can't even do 50 push-ups or, or yeah, 50 push-ups or 30 pull-ups. If somebody asks you to, even 15 pull-ups. A lot of people struggle with just 15 pull-ups or 10, you know, because you haven't mastered you haven't mastered your body yet. That's the key thing because I think everybody have to master their body. I'm talking because I have, I'm able to go to these gyms and utilize and add weight to, you know, more resistance. Basically, that's what it is. But at the same time, I train like a martial artist too. That's another thing. I train like a martial artist, you know, because I want to... What do you mean by like a martial artist? So, very functional. I train functional. So, the basic idea, I don't train just to be, okay, I know I'm not going to be in never in a setting where I'm just doing a a, a push up or a, what I mean by that. I'm not going to be in a position where I'm sitting and on a bench press and doing a bench press, if that makes sense. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be lifting a box or lifting this or lifting my baby boy or whatever the case may be. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to have to use my legs, you know, certain functions, certain. Bioneer, I don't know if you ever heard of that YouTuber, Bioneer. Bioneer. He's definitely, he's definitely in the direction I've been uh, kind of training like. If that makes sense, by being utilizing yeah. things that you're around, that's why I do like the outside environment. That's why I do like the the wilderness or the the urban, the unurban, the rural areas of uh, particular areas. 
instead of, you know, being out on trees. And it's like... <laughs> yeah, what do you think of my stuff? Your stuff? Yeah, uh, have you, have you seen the stuff I do on trees? Oh, yeah. On my Instagram? Oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that's what time it is. That's exactly what time it is. Because you're... You, we're always in these environments that really don't dictate. I mean, you're not training for a sport because I'm not training for a sport. I'm just training for, keep it real with you, survival, you know, just in case some right. shit pop off. You kind of see what I'm saying? Just in case some stuff pop off. I can, I know I can run more than 15 minutes and be out of the area. What's going, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, backpacking. I, you know, backpacking, having like 80 pounds, 40 pounds on my back while I'm doing pull-ups, push-ups, whatever. Yeah. You know, that's the training I think we all need, the, the warrior type training. You know, that's why I say martial art because people can relate to that. But it's definitely warrior type training, you know. And putting your yeah. body in positions, this is another thing, putting your body in positions that you know... You're weak at, but you want to you want to make them stronger. So obviously, you're gonna do a lot more exercises that you're comfortable with or you like, enjoy. That makes the day go faster. But I think that's the benefit of specialty. You know, taking things and specializing. And I think if you specialize in, in the ring game, the ring game takes your game to a whole nother level because everything else is a lot more easier. The planch. You know what I'm saying? You're doing this higher up on the elevation. You're using your arms like anything else, right? And what else you got to use? But you're using muscles that you don't usually use because it's the gravity. You kind of see where I'm coming from? The gravity is kind of helping you or taking you out of the element. Yeah. Well, and once you can learn the planch, you can learn how to do it on the ring. That's like level exactly now we talking now we talking because it literally steps your game up the cool thing is like i said building your foundation because you don't want to get in this industry even though fitness is a lifestyle but you don't want to get caught up in the calisthenic world where all of a sudden now you're bored because that's what I noticed with a lot of these brothers and sisters that get into calisthenic work. They're no longer into it anymore. Because they're they, they doing all this jumping around, flipping on the bar. <laughs> and then, and, and if you notice, all those people who's been jumping around, flipping around on the bar are always injured. It's kind of like the CrossFitters. <laughs> yeah. And that's my opinion. But this is what I've noticed, you know. And what what's crazy about it people tend to not want to do it anymore. They, oh, yeah, I used to do all that, you know. Then they get burnt out. A couple years later, they coming back, trying to get back to where they was and all this other stuff. Got a little couple of pounds heavier. So just something to think about. I'll never be that kind of person that says, oh, yeah, I used to do all that. Because I don't And I don't think I none of us should. That fitness is lifestyle. Yes. Agree. And and one of one of my motivations to, to keep going is I want to be ninety years old and still be able to do push ups, sit ups, and maybe even pull ups, stuff like that. And I know that's kind of a crazy number, but I just saw the other day on YouTube a like a seventy five year old doing extremely advanced calisthenics. Exactly. And exactly. So What's another 20 years we will still do push-ups and, you know, just good exercise stuff. And kill the game. And that's the cool thing about the younger generation, you know, coming up. Or, you know, because you're going to see a lot more activity with me and videos. Because I'm actually reuniting with a, a good friend of mine out there, my little brother, Abdul, and uh, the Denver Bar Squad. And the cool thing about... The situation is that he motivates me or he helps motivate me. When I'm seeing these younger guys doing all this other crazy stuff, even though I'm not a 
I don't be doing flips or anything like that, but I got the basics down, like muscle ups and all the crazy, you know, <laughs> all the other fun, crazy stuff. But at the same time, being able to be inspired, being able to keep up with it. Not saying you got to keep up with the trend and all that stuff, but just stay on it. Then about time you're my age, you're still in the game. You know, it's not like, that's the thing. Even like these bodybuilders like Dexter Jackson. I don't know if you follow the Olympia, Mr. Olympia. But Dexter Jackson, this brother look hella good. And he's like 52. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Still competing. Still doing it. You know what I'm saying? And not not saying because he's doing all, but he don't do a whole bunch of heavy lifting. You know what I'm saying? He's been, he's a bodybuilder. So that's what he specializes in, bodybuilding. You know, I'm all about the aesthetics now, but I, I, I do believe in my health, making sure my health is on point. You know, my eating is right and the things that I'm putting in my body that is going to benefit me for that day or for that week, just in case I got to do a intensive fasting situation, you know. To be able to put myself in these situations too where, you know, we 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 don't really here here's something I just thought about. This is kind of maybe a tangent, I guess. But um I'm who comes to mind is Lance Armstrong. <laughs> I'm sure you heard of that guy. Yeah. Now you talking like resilience, even though he might have been on some steroids. The funny thing is, even if he was on the steroids. That don't that don't even dictate the work ethic. You feel me? Cause that's the key. Yeah. Your work ethic. And if you coming in the gym and you bullshitting like majority of the people that who are who are in the gym or even at the park. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's kind of funny because everybody just a lot of people are just going through the motions. They're not really thinking about Oh, this is, if I do this, I'm just looking. Because everybody, I noticed this has been the 2000 thing. Everybody want to look good in the gym, even though they don't, because they over there just on their phone now. And it's really a huge phenomenon, especially the 20 coming into 2000. Everybody's all on the phone, looking at their self, doing this, doing, instead of doing the work. <laughs> That's what I've been noticing. Yeah. That's just me. That's just me. And then, but, and not saying I don't mess with my phone. The only time I'm messing with my phone is really changing the music or something on that level. <laughs> but the key, the key element is worth ethic. Hands down, worth ethic. If you want to see those results, Finn, you know, as far as, I, I, I would give myself at least three months three months or more till you actually start being able to see better results. And you got to be active. You got to be consistent on it. If that's what you want to learn, but I think you need to learn it like, well, you basically got to focus on that particular exercise. Kind of like when, when I'm learning how to do my handstand push-ups, I was on the wall. I was doing a lot of handstand wall push-ups and that was every day building that strength. Especially being upside down, too. <laughs> yeah. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah, if you want to yeah, learn the planche, yeah. even when you want to do uh, muscle ups, you know where I started on the muscle up? I was like, I'm going to get this muscle up. I started on a little lower bar, the bar I could stand up, and, and I just started doing a swing in motion, and I was able to get it. And about time I, I started off in Vegas. 2016, I started doing it, well, I was doing it more than, I was doing straight bar, um, straight bar dips, that would help you, straight bar dips, get as much straight bar dips as you can, kill that stuff, <laughs> start pushing that up, then I started doing, um, I started doing uh, explosive push pull-ups, you kind of see what I'm saying? Doing an explosive pull-up. Just how fast you can come up. Bow. Bow. And just hit that up real tough. You know? And start doing that. Even if you're starting off with three. Three to five. I would start off with three to five. Explosive pull-ups. You know? 
Then you start getting on to the dips, straight arm dips, hitting them up real tough. You know, because all it is is that transition. It's that transition. So I started on a little ass bar. Then I started swing. Matter of fact, my brother was, uh, I videotaped it. Matter of fact, I videotaped I think I got it on one of my YouTube pages where I put it up on there, where I was just starting to do the, the di or do the muscle up. So I started getting it. I started literally getting the, the, the motion of the, the particular, and I was only doing maybe one to two. So about time I got, got from Vegas, I started messing with my brothers, Abdul, Avery, and, um, Dylan, and, uh, my brother, um, oh man, I forgot my other brother's name, <laughs> and we all got together, and it, Literally, they motivated me to get on the muscle up. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. The energy, the energy literally got me on my muscle up. I'm seeing them doing the muscle up. I'm like, okay, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. And they pretty much inspired me and I started getting it. Then we started doing, we dedicated like a, a Monday. We dedicated a Monday. Monday muscle up day. <laughs> literally. Nice. And see, and that's another thing I think would help you too. If you got somebody you can train with, you feel what I'm saying? Or push you a little bit. Don't take me wrong. We all got somebody. Find somebody <laughs> to meet up with you. Not saying they got to be yeah. your client or whatnot. Because most of the people I train with are not my clients. They're, I train with people who are actually they on that level or they just want to train with me. You know what I'm saying? But they can hang a little bit with me, if that makes sense. <laughs> so that's something I would think you would want to, you know, don't take me wrong. I know the COVID issue and all this other stuff. People don't want to be by people and all this other crazy, phenomenal kind of. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think the universe would do anything like that. The only thing would do that would be a man. Man making something that he want to destroy some of the people off the plane, because a lot of us are immune to the situation. <laughs> but I think the people who a lot of other diseases that did a lot worse. So exactly. A long time ago, before man makes diseases, so maybe um, the universe did do it. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So does that answer your question, or? Yeah, no, it it, uh, it definitely did. Um, I think kind of what I got out of that. Is going back to the beginning of the conversation, which is basic, uh, master the basics. Really hit those reps, trying to get a lot more push ups, a lot more pull ups, a lot more dips, a lot more, uh, more exercises, and then dedicate a day towards training specifically for a skill. Yes, I think, week. and that works. That kind of wraps up pretty well. Yeah, that sound pretty accurate because, I mean, that's what's been working for me personally. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. and I know, don't take me wrong, I know it's a lot of cats out here in calisthenics, these younger brothers, they're learning stuff phenomenally. They get it down. But I would challenge them on the basics. Most of them don't have the basics down. They can do the backflips, flipping all over the bars and doing all this other crazy planching this and that. But then you have them do 15 pull-ups or even just 50 push-ups, brother. They can't even do the, oh man, that's too hard. Or man, that's too pretty challenging. You know, and you can see it within their conditioning too. That's another thing. Their conditioning. Because it is about reps and sets when it comes to calisthenics. It's about reps and sets. Keep it real with you. If you really want to build muff muscle, you know. But some people are going to, I guess, genetically going to go. They're going to hit their <laughs> plateau. Most of the people are going to hit their plateau. So your body get efficient with the, you know, efficient with push-ups. Efficient with, that's why weights come in. That's why I would say where weights will come in. Vest. Getting you a vest. Getting you um, ankle weights. For your muscle ups, if you even if you're starting off on that level, you kind of see what I'm saying. Yeah, I do. You know, and getting the heavy weight because I think we should train with heavy weight just in case because it's explos explosive. You want to be explosive. That's what I usually do with the the 225. Even though I can probably bench press way more than that, 
but I usually do that for five reps. You know, five reps for five, yeah, five sets. Sometimes, that's sometimes, you know, because I'm usually putting on more weight, you know, just to see how explosive, What? where am I at? Where am I at mentally? You know what I'm saying? Physically, too, as well. Because I'm seeing gains. That's another thing. I'm seeing gains within my own particular workouts. And don't take me wrong, Finn. I do use other people's workouts. Even though I'm a trainer, even though I make my own particular. But it's kind of good that you know what's going on outside of your your particular training, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You know, because I'm, I'm a big advocate. I use Jeff Cavalier's, his earlier stuff. I don't know about now. Don't take me wrong. I'm not criticizing a brother. But he has been coming up with some <laughs> crazy shit recently. You know, especially with all these fake weights and all this other crazy stuff. Stuff he don't even have to do. That's the thing. But I think what they're doing, that's the problem with these YouTubers. They're making content that is not really related to anything is like dumb ass shit that don't really relate to anything you kind of <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe maybe i don't know but they're doing stuff that don't really make sense you know now let's and that's the difference i think what you're going to get here from this particular show i don't i try not i don't know everything and i'm in certain things i experience that's the thing i experience this is what i've witnessed with my experience but at the same time it's like people are doing things and i don't know if it's just the the you know for the likes or the youtube views i don't think that's not important to me what's important is my integrity What's important is my drive. What is important is my influence. What is important is my um, mentorship. What can I give to people that's actually going to benefit them? They can value it. I don't need to talk about no cell phone and, you know, gold and <laughs> gold and blue iPhone. What is it going to? How is that going to be? How is it going to be used in my lifestyle that it can affect your fitness game or affect your? You see where I'm coming from? Yeah, you know, I haven't really seen a video. With, well, I'm sure they got them out there. Even just the the simple thing of water, drinking more water during the day. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, that'd be things sad. <laughs> but other than that, how's the weather out there? How's everything out there? Uh, the weather is good. It's getting a little chilly finally. Um, it's, it's only just started getting cold in the last couple of weeks. Okay, okay. And that, what about there? It's been, the man, Hawaii, hands down, the weather is awesome. So we, we roughly been averaging, well, the winter time, so-called winter time, it's been like 81. Go down to about, the lowest I seen it was 75. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's... And, and we talking, summertime was crazy. Summertime was 88, 90, right? Crazy. And you could tell the difference even in the house. I'm like, we don't even have an air condition. We don't need air conditioning because we're covered by the trees. The trees kind of block us, shade us in a little bit. So we get some cool air coming through. But the difference when this summer, it was super hot in here. I would remind you, we was locked down. We are... We went through our second phase here out in Hawaii. We already did our second phase. So the first phase, when I was working out in the house, and I didn't even have my pull-up bar. I just had my my uh, dumbbells and whatnot, and just me. So I was sweating like <laughs> gallons of water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it was really, it was really uh, humid in the in the area or in the room, but then, and I noticed I was sweating just in my sleep, just sweating because you don't really need no covers or anything <laughs> in Hawaii. Yeah. So now it gets a little cooler, but it's, I mean, you still technically, I don't, I don't sweat like I was doing um, the summertime, but it's beautiful, brother. 
The weather, hands down, is beautiful. I've been to a few places, and I think, hands down, Hawaii has the perfect weather. As far as training, as far as, uh, you know, because even through this pandemic, I've been outside training. You see what I'm saying? I've been going to the parks. So I go to, as soon as I get off my job, I go to this park, like right down the street from where I'm at, and I just get my training in, even though I was in... Yeah. You know, so it was just that type of, you know, situation. Because y'all going through y'all second tier, right? Our, our second what? Second tier out there in Texas. The second lockdown. Oh, uh, no. We're not really locking down the second time. Okay. Okay. So that's cool. That's cool. Because I know it's been yeah. a few places. I know California on their lockdown. I know Washington's on their lockdown, and I think Colorado's on their second lockdown. So, yeah, know. California just pretty much stayed locked down, didn't it? Yep, 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 yep. So it's been, yeah. it's been crazy, man. It's been crazy. So yeah. So, so did you have any other questions or? Um, I mean, I could talk all night, but <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to make your podcast too long, and you know. And uh, you mentioned that you're going to be going uh, to Alaska. What are you doing there? Okay, so I got family. I'm I'm born and raised in Alaska, you know. No way. And yeah. Okay. So I, I've been away from there a long time, <laughs> like two decades. I finally had went up there in 2014, 20 years later. Matter of fact, it was ironic that we had our little um, reunion, too, our... our, our uh, High school reunion during that period of time, but 20 years I've been away from there, and I, my particularly was up there for my mother. But I got all types of family up there. I got my all my immediate uh, uncles and everybody, uncles, aunts, everybody living up there. My grandmother was up there, and they no longer there, so they left. And my mom's up there, so. We, I just got to go and take care of some things up there, you know. So I figure economically I was looking at, okay, Hawaii's a little far from <laughs> Alaska. So I was looking at, I have established, I'm established in Denver somewhat. You know, all my, everything is there. I reestablished myself out in Colorado. So I got a better chance of being able to travel there to Alaska, not as long travel, if that makes sense. Plus, I just got out here in Hawaii, so I'm just really building rapport with people out here. And it's been kind of crazy because the rapport haven't been built due to the COVID. Because everybody, the only place I've been going to is <laughs> the job and home. You kind of see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and training, don't take me wrong, I've been training via... Zoom, I've been training via some physical, you know, interaction with people. We'll meet up at the park one-on-one -on -one and do our thing. But it's yeah. been challenging. That's been very challenging. Because one of the other things is I want to be able to present you are the gym or myself when I'm at the park or where I'm at somewhere where people can see you. You feel me? That was the biggest reason why I came out here was like, okay, I'm going to take over the, the parks up in this place <laughs> far as training, putting on these boot camps. That was the goal, but COVID changed all that. You feel what I'm saying? The COVID changed all that game. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. so that was the purpose. But like I said, I'm, I'm heading back to Colorado in the next couple weeks and um it's going to be a bit definitely time different so i could be able to chop it up with you a little bit more we'll get you back on the show again as well those who's yeah to get you on here talk about some things even the relationship with our clientele that that would be a good <laughs> subject matter we oh, can yeah. dive into because there's some interesting people you know, because you don't have to take them on. That's another thing. You don't have to take people on. Then you really find out what people are about. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, 
But is there anything else yet? Is there anything else? If that answered you. Uh, you know, Texas is pretty close to Colorado, so that'd be yes. cool to do some boot camps or whatever. Man. But, uh, yeah, man. We'll invite I you. I, 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 I said we'll invite you. We'll invite you because me and another organization, uh, the Denver Bar Squad, and you are the gym, we have came together. We we built a, we built a facade. We got some stuff on um, Facebook that we started a while ago but now we're going to be reuniting and we're going to start getting more attention because we was going to put on a big tournament a calisthenic tournament there in 2017 oh, yeah and we actually got some gyms built because of our um influence you know what we have done over the years there it was it it's it's going to be interesting. Like I said, it's going to be interesting because we, we have been opening a lot of doors out there in Colorado too, as far as getting more awareness of the calisthenic world. Because I think calisthenics need to be, I think they need to make it a sport. Keep it real with you. I think they need oh, to make sure. it a sport, but make it a sport on certain elements, kind of like they do the CrossFit. You know, cause, but a CrossFit is kind of, Certain things that are not really logic, just that's my opinion. That's not really logic, but really put, put a person in a situation where it's more of like a uh, a mutter or a, a triathlon type of event. <laughs> where you're doing like some real life, <laughs> real life issues you got to deal with or get yourself out of. Let the games yeah. begin. <laughs> well, and since... since uh, Calisthenics is essentially mastering your own body weight. You could add on things like parkour or certain types yes. of jumps or using your body to complete certain tasks that are impressive. Yes, I agree with that. Parkour, and it's funny because that is definitely something I've always been interested in because it's all about jumping and moving. I'm My background is a wrestler, so I always knew how to fall. You see what I'm saying? That was part of my... Yep. You know, in, in, in parkour, it's kind of interesting. I talked about this on the show, but my father was actually pretty good at that type of stuff. He was the shortest brother out of all the brothers in the family. and uh, But he could leap. He could jump up high as hell. <laughs> you know, just with the skills he had. And I think I inherited that a little bit because I used to really get into that type of stuff. Even though it's been a little... I mean, certain things I have been doing, but I haven't been doing since I've been out here just due to the limitations of access, you know. But at the same time, I appreciate you coming on here, man. I appreciate your, you know, sharing your views, you know, and asking for a brother's advice. <laughs> yeah, dude, absolutely. And hopefully... Thank you for your advice. Yeah, and hopefully you get something out of. I uh, hopefully you could take something with you, you know, or this experience, cause I, I, I know you got it going on, brothers, cause all the power is within you. You just gotta take advantage of them opportunities. And I think, like I said, if you if you take advantage of your building something, your value, you putting value in, you know, especially with your carpentry. But then at the same time with your business model, you can set time for your babies. With the directorship, they're going to take all your time. Literally, they're going to take all your time. They're going to abuse your time. Then you're going to be wondering how to focus on your family because you got your business going on. You got to see what I'm saying? So I think with that being said, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out a balance. Start off with meditation. I'll send you right away. As soon as I get off here, I'll send you that information. The meditation. Thanks, I thank you, brother. Thank you for coming on once again. And I appreciate you, man. Much respect. I appreciate you too, man. Much respect here too. Thank you.